So let's talk about biotin, the vitamin biotin. And when I say biotin, the main buzzword to get out of it is carboxylation. It's going to be used in carboxylation reactions. So biotin is also known as vitamin B7, vitamin H, or coenzyme R. Uh, biotin, uh, think of it as B7. It's one of those water-soluble vitamins. So it's going to be found in Swiss chard, liver, leafy veggie greens. Leafy veggie genes think folate, but also think biotin. And then uh, wh how do you get a deficiency of biotin? Well, really there's going to be one testable way to ask it. And that's going to be you have a patient that comes in with a large, with a diet exclusively of raw eggs for the past four weeks. They've been eating raw eggs and in extreme quantities. Raw eggs, large quantities, think biotin, biotin. So uh, you have your patient that has a large raw egg diet. Some of the symptoms that they may also present with would be alopecia, so hair loss, dermatitis, neurologic findings, uh, maybe a facial rash, and then enteritis. So let's talk about carboxylation. Like I said, when you hear biotin, think carboxylation reactions. So what it is, is just a carbon dioxide transfer from one molecule to the other. So we're adding a carbon group and then oxygen carboxylation. Uh, so carboxylation reactions. Uh, do you notice what the common, common denominator out of these four enzymes are? Um, Acetyl-CoA carboxylase, methylmalate cro crotonyl coa carboxylase, pyruvate carboxylase, propionyl coa carboxylase. Okay, carboxylase. Carboxylation reactions. How much more obvious can you get? When you hear carboxylation, biotin's probably going to be a coenzyme needed for that reaction. It's probably going to be a cofactor required. So when you hear carboxylation, think biotin. So uh, we'll talk briefly about each of these, the acetyl-CoA carboxylase. It's going to be where you put a carbon onto the acetyl-CoA to form melanyl-CoA. And then pyruvate carboxylase is going to be where you're converting pyruvate into uh, plus uh, pyruvate into OAA. Uh, and so you're taking a three carbon pyruvate, adding that carbon and oxygen to form OAA. Uh, which is involved in the TCA cycle. Then you've also got propionyl CoA carboxylase, where you're adding a carbon to propionyl CoA. Um, I also threw in here propionyl CoA, when you add a carbon, when you carboxylate it, it forms methylmalonyl CoA. That's going to require biotin. However, methylmalonyl CoA um, further gets turned into succinyl CoA, which can be used in. Uh, as a precursor for heme synthesis, or it can feed into your TCA cycle. Uh, that one has dual purpose. Um, all the information that I got from these slides were found in my medical school education or on wikipedia.org. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. Any comments, be sure to like if you found this video useful, and subscribe for future videos. Thank you very much.